If you ask most health policy experts about the American healthcare system and its deficiencies, they focus on three problems, access, cost, and quality. On the other hand, if you talk to doctors, they are preoccupied by the problems of the medical malpractice system. Now, malpractice is closely related to problems of safety and the uneven quality of the American healthcare system. Why do we have a medical malpractice system? Well, for three main reasons. First, to hold people accountable for mistakes in their decisions or mistakes in their performance of medical care. Second, to compensate people for damages or injuries that result from being in the healthcare system. And third, to incentivize the whole system, hospitals, doctors, nurses, and others, to use caution, practice safely, and to have higher quality of care. On any of these goals, our system is failing, no matter whose perspective you look at. Consider the doctor. Most doctors think that no matter what I do, I'm going to be sued. And recent studies show they're probably right. A recent study published in the New England Journal showed that high-risk doctors' chance of being sued over the course of their career is roughly 100%. They will be sued. Even low-risk doctors, doctors where there's a low chance they're going to be sued, about 70% of them are likely to be sued. The doctors who are almost inevitably going to be sued are predominantly surgeons, neurosurgeons, cardiac surgeons, orthopedic surgeons. Low-risk doctors turn out to be primary care doctors, pediatricians, family practice doctors, psychiatrists. But everyone stands a very high chance of being sued over the course of their entire career. No wonder they're so preoccupied by medical malpractice. From the patient's perspective, it's also a serious problem. It turns out that patients uh, who are injured often do not get compensated. Compensation, even when they are injured and everyone recognizes it, takes a long time. And how much people are compensated is a lot like a lottery. In the 1980s, a research team from Harvard looked at over 30,000 cases of people treated in New York State. First, they looked at how many of those patients actually experience some adverse event or side effect that they shouldn't. And it turns out that just under 4% experience an adverse event. Then they asked, well, how many of the adverse events are related to an error that was done by a doctor, a nurse, or the hospital system? And it turns out that less than 1% were related to a point of negligence. So 4% of patients were harmed in some way or had an adverse event, but only a quarter of them was it actually related to something a provider did. The next thing the research team did is to look at malpractice claims. Of those 30,000 patients, 47 actually filed a malpractice claim. It turned out eight of the 47 were related to negligence by a provider that was avoidable. But most of the claims were not related to negligence. They were what doctors would call frivolous lawsuits. So overall, 90% of adverse events due to negligence didn't lead to a malpractice claim. Only 1.5% of incidents of malpractice actually led to a lawsuit. So the system isn't working. There are a lot of frivolous lawsuits and patients who are harmed because of provider negligence or errors we're not actually getting compensated. If you look at the overall system, malpractice premiums, settlements, administrative costs, legal costs, that costs about $35 billion, a little more than 1% of the total healthcare spending. Defensive medicine is much harder to quantify because there are many reasons doctors order tests or do procedures. But the best estimate is that it's about $66 billion worth of the whole system, or 2% of total healthcare spending. As a matter of fact, when the Congressional Budget Office looked at how much does defensive medicine and medical malpractice add to the increasing cost, it turns out not much. In part, because it turns out probably surprising to most people that medical malpractice suits and payouts for medical malpractice suits aren't actually rising, but are coming down or staying the same. So while it's a big concern, it doesn't look like it's growing fast. Nonetheless, we should still do something about our dysfunctional medical malpractice system, which isn't working for doctors and isn't working for patients. A very common solution is to cap 
damages and to uh, change how people can sue. One idea is to cap the damages for non-economic pain and suffering kind of damages at $250,000. To make the statute of limitations when people can bring a lawsuit to one year after they discover the problem for adults and three years for children. And the other is to change who has to pay out from what's called joint and several liability where anyone has to pay to individual liability. Now implementing this group of solutions would actually save a relatively small amount of money, you might be surprised. When the Congressional Budget Office looked at studies that have, about states that have made this kind of change, it saved only about four and a half billion dollars on reducing insurance premiums, and it would save only about $6.6 .6 billion on reducing defensive medicine. That total is $11 billion in save from that kind of bill, which is less than 1% of total health care spending. But there are other proposals to reform the broken medical malpractice system. One interesting idea are health courts, where there are specialized judges hearing malpractice cases and only malpractice cases, and they have the ability to call in their own medical experts. Another idea is safe harbors, where physicians would be presumed to be innocent of a malpractice if they had electronic health records, they followed a guideline. Now the patient could show that the doctor followed the wrong guideline or didn't follow the guideline and still win, but the doctor would have a presumption of innocence. Another alternative is the University of Michigan Saying Sorry program. They monitor all their patients and any patient that's injured because of negligence is told that they were injured because of ne negligence and offered a standardized compensation package. One of the interesting things is we actually don't have a lot of data on how well these alternatives will work. We don't know if you institute safe harbors, will that actually change the system so fewer doctors are sued, patients receive compensation faster. The University of Michigan has generated data showing that its malpractice claims have come down and it settles problems faster with patients. However you look at it, whether it's access, cost, quality, the malpractice system, the American healthcare system is not working well. It needs to be reformed. Next, we're going to look at the hundred years of attempts at reforming the healthcare system, culminating in the passage of the Affordable Care Act.